equidistant apart how wide your needle is. And then you take the needle and drop it. And if you do this over and over and over again, and keep track of how many times the needle cuts the line, which means like the needle lays across one of the lines as opposed to laying between the lines, the probability of cutting the line comes out to be pi. It's one, it's one out of pi. I will show you that. This is in a clip that I'm going to show you at some point. But there's this math professor at this university who um, is like showing this happen. He just and he doesn't do it like we don't follow it for a hundred or a thousand trials. But he's just talking about it. And he's showing it. And if you do that over and over and over again long enough with enough trials, the probability that you get is one out of pi, which is one really really pi. cool. Because think about it. When you drop the needle, the space it takes up. When you spin a needle, oh. is a circle. So straight lines have a relationship with a circle because straight lines can be turned in the two-dimensional space, and all of the possibilities of a straight line in the two-dimensional space, all of the possibilities make a circle. So really kind of cool. Check this out. You're going to love this game. Flip the coin. Okay. Heads, I win. Flip again. Heads, I win again. Flip again. Oh, tails. You lose. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't this a great game? <laughs> so, your brother or sister or somebody say, we're going to play a game. If the coin comes up heads, I win. And if the coin comes up tails, you lose. So different options for heads and tails, right? Okay. Wait, so you start what? playing, and you get into the game, and you realize, wait a minute. Is What's the issue lose? with that game? Oriana? You never win. You could never win. Thank you so much. Because if it's heads I win, tails you lose, well, no matter what, the person controlling the game is going to win or you're going to lose. Either way, that's not fair at all. So what we talk about when we deal with relative frequency, sorry, I did not see that there. What does frequency mean? We talked about this the other day. If you say your little sister fries, fries, fries frequently, or if you say I frequently do homework. What does frequently mean? Often. 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 Many times, or somebody over here said it. Always. Often. Often. How often? Frequency is how often something happens. So the frequency of an event is how often that happens. But notice at the top of our notes here, relative <coughs> frequency. Relative. I want everyone to underline or highlight relative. It is relative <coughs> to the total amount of outcomes or your sample space. So it's relative because it's divided by your total number of trials. So when we start talking about frequency and relative frequency, this is going to be used when we did a trial and we kept track of the outcomes. So I'm thinking that Friday we're going to do some probability trials and have you guys keep track of, I wanted this outcome. How many trials did I do? How many times did I get that outcome? What is my experimental probability? Because here's the question. <clears throat> that deck of cards, this deck of cards, really, is this a fair deck of cards no. for everything that you know about it? No. 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 It's got all four suits. It's got all 13 cards of all four suits. It's a fair deck of cards. What was Laney's chance of winning? One out of, 52. One out of 52. How many times do you think I did this in your class? Three, like three, three or four, maybe? Five times. Okay, we'll say five. How many times I did it in the afternoon class? Four. Four times. And Laney won on the fourth one. So our theoretical probability, the probability that math tells me should happen, was one out of 52. The probability that we saw happen for real was one out of nine. Whoa. We had one person win and we only did nine trials. So if we stopped right there, and we stopped after Laney had won, our experimental, what we did in the experiment, our experimental probability would be one ninth. Does that match our theoretical probability or what math tells me it should be? No. no. 
So the experimental probability, what we do when we perform the experiment, will not always match the theoretical. Now, there's this law in math. It's called the law of large numbers. And essentially, the law of large numbers states that even if my experimental probability doesn't match the um, theoretical probability, if I perform my experiment enough times, hence the law of large numbers, we're talking hundreds and thousands of times, that my experimental probability should end up matching my theoretical. So what the law of large numbers states is if you perform a trial enough times, or if you perform an experiment with enough trials, because every time you do it is a trial. So like, what's my probability of spinning a th uh, two up here? Two out of eight, right? Because there's two threes. So I would say my theoretical is two eights. But if I want to find the relative frequency of each event as a fraction, as a decimal, to find the relative frequency, I would have to perform this and actually do it. So in digits, and it doesn't work from this module, in digits, you can go in and there's a probability menu. In math tools, there's probability. You've got coins, you've got spinners, you've got all, like every probability that you could want to do, it's in there. So in your math tools, in digits, you can go and try this. Um, I'm going to keep moving so we can actually talk about this. So, I left this copy in there so I could do. Oh, I need to try to make that work. How many trials? Spin the spinner 40 times it wants me to do. Keep track of the possible outcomes. I um, wonder if I can get to the spinner. Give me two seconds to try to go the back route. Yeah. Or it might work if I just don't use the smart board. Sorry, I should try that. See if it works if I don't use the smart board. Yeah. So if I go this way to here, what are we? Sixteen three? Yeah, now we're in sixteen and three. I don't know if the spinner will work this way. Because I need the spinner that matches yours, which is why it's a little tricky. All right, here we go. Got our spinner. So you've got coin, spinner, bag of marbles, deck of cards, number cube, or none that you can choose. So we have the spinner. Crap, I'm going to reset this page and hope it resets back to the right spinner. Because then you choose what kind of spinner you want. So then I click run to have it spin. So write down these outcomes as we go. We got a four. We got another, we got a one. We got another four. We got a one. We got another one. Well, we got a two. Sorry, it keeps glitching and stopping where I think. Another two. Another two. So then you can have it give you a table. If I've only done this outcome four times and I got a two, five, a, or sorry, this is my numbers. I had two ones, five twos, no threes, and three fours. So even though this says spin it 40 times, we're starting to run out of time. If I use these to find the experimental probability, I'd say, well, to get a one, the event that I'm looking for, that happened two times out of how many total times? 10. 10. So my experimental probability is going to be 2 out of 10, or 0 0.20. If this happened 5 out of 10, it's going to be 0 0.5. If this happened 3 out of 10, it's going to be 0 0.3. So we, can, we could keep doing this. We could go back and we could run this more. We could do 10 more trials. And then I could find the table for that, and it will generate me a new table with what happened that time. I could go back and run it again. I could do a tree diagram of all possible outcomes, one, two, three, and four, and then it will break off and tell me how many. Um, I can just keep a table 
of each trial, what was the outcome. So these tools are pretty cool. They're in your math tools, and you can always reset everything back if you want to get it back to defaults. So let's move on to the got it. So what is the relative frequency of spinning less than a four? So this was the outcome and how many times it happened. If we add all these up, we would get 40. So there were 40 total trials. So less than four. What outcomes satisfy less than four? Eli? One, two, and three. One, and three. Four is not less than four. Do not fall in that trap. So I take the event as being less than three. So how many times did that happen? Well, 10 plus 12 gives me 22, plus four. So I get 26 out of, and I start reducing. I see that they're both even, so I'm gonna divide them both by two to begin with. I get 13 out of 20. I cannot divide by two again, but what I do see I can do is get my denominator easily to 100. How would I turn my 20 into 100? Yeah. Times five, so I do the same thing on top. 10 times five is 50. Three times time, three times time, three times five. Yeah, so this is 65, 0 0.65 or 65%. Any questions? So our relative frequency, when it's asking for relative frequency, that we leave in fraction form. But then if we continue on to find the probability, that's when we can use the decimals and percents and all that stuff. I just want to move on now. Hello. Well, it's not letting me clear, but. Table shows one class of results for spinning the spinner 40 times. I think this matches what we just had. There we go. I knew it would come back. Suppose the class spins the spinner 40 more times. Would you expect the relative frequency of the event spin a two to change or remain the same? So if we did this again, we would base our potential outcomes off our theoretical probability, right? What's two's chance of happening? Two out of eight, or one fourth, right? We expect that twos are gonna come up one fourth of the time. If we expect that a two will come up one fourth of 40 times, how many times would we expect it to come up? We would expect it to come up 10 times. So since our expectation is 10, would we expect it to stay the same or change? If it was 12 the first time they did it. Yeah, we would probably expect a little bit of change. We would probably expect that it happening 12 times is happening more than we actually expect it to happen. Suppose the class spins a spinner 400 times. Is there a value that you expect the relative frequency of the event spin at two to be close to? So if we did it 400 times, I can do the same exact math, except do what? I do it again. Yeah, change my 40 to a 400. What's a fourth of 400? We would expect my two to happen 100 times. Because one fourth of four hundred. We will wrap for there today. So on Friday, we will have to pick up and finish the back of this for sure. And then we'll move on and see what all we get done. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy not having a test. Yeah, I will post both homework so it's accessible to you guys.